Welcome to part 6 of the Wigwag engine build. In this video I will be turning the bronze bearings for the main axle shaft and also the pivot bearing. A piece of half inch phosphor bronze was set in the lathe and then faced clean and the diameter reduced down to just over 8mm to suit the reamed hole in the engine chassis as required in the drawings. The length needs to be just under the 12mm thickness of the chassis so that it does not protrude. A further short section of the stock was then turned to 12mm and then the hole was drilled and reamed out to suit the 4mm pivot rod. A test fit was made with the chassis and then a light cut was made to the first few millimetres of the bearing to help align the bearing squarely when being pressed into the chassis. This was then cleaned up and parted off to length. The other end now needs to be turned to suit the internal diameter of the spring, so this was turned until the spring fitted nicely and then faced down to final drawing dimensions. The bearing for the axle is a simple straight bush, so this was turned and reamed out to suit the axle and parted off to final size. The 6mm silver steel axle shaft simply has the ends tidied up on the lathe and then, using a file, a neat chamfer was formed on the ends. This was tested with the bearing to ensure it was a good running fit within the bush. Next up is to make the connecting rod for the piston and the pivot rod, both made from 4mm ground silver steel. Both parts are the same except for the overall length, so these were sawn to length and set in the chuck. I reduced the major thread diameter by just a few thousandths prior to threading as silver steel is a tough metal to put small threads on. A lead-in taper was filed on the end of the shaft and then a 4mm die used to thread the shaft using lots of lubricant and backing out to clear the swarf regularly.
Finally, a small shoulder was turned to ensure correct dimension and to tidy up the termination of the thread form on the shaft. This process was then repeated on the other end of the shaft and also for the pivot rod, taking care to replicate the drawing specification with particular attention to the dimension of the plane section of the shaft. Assemble the parts and check the fit of all the components to ensure the threads fully fit up to the shoulders so that no thread is visually exposed. Next up is the spring nut and the drawing dimensions will most likely need to be modified to suit the availability of the spring but it is essentially a nut to hold the spring in position and allow for adjustment of the tension. A short length of brass was turned to size and then I used my knurling tool to form a diamond pattern on the nut to give a good finger grip. This was then cleaned up and the hole drilled out and tapped to M4 before being parted off and remounted back in the chuck for the other turning operations to be done. A clearance hole was then drilled part way to finish the part. So that's another set of parts, now machined and ready for assembly. In the next part, I'll be making the crank disc and assembling the engine for its first run up. If you are building this engine, please join my Wigwag Engine Facebook group and be sure to show us your work. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching. <laughs>